예, 안녕하십니까. 어, 여러분들 참여하신 여러분들. 아, 시간 내주셔서 굉장히 반갑고요. 어, 오늘 우리 학교에서 큰 행사를 지금 하고 있는데 어, AR, VR, 어, 메타버스에 관심 있는 그런 분들에 관해서 메타버스에 관한 이제 그 우리 세미나를 보고 있습니다. 그래서 어, 첫 번째 우리 이 세션에서는 어, 플로리다 유니버스티 플로리다 대학에서 근무하시는 마르쿠스 산토스 선생님 어, 박사님께서 발표를 해 주실 텐데요. 이 박, 어, 산토스 박사님은 우리 대학에서 이게 어, 2013년 맞죠? 예, 맞아요. 예, 2013년에 우리 학교에서 박사학위 받으셨고 독일 브라운호프 그죠? 브라운호프 연구소에서 음. 12.5대 1이라는 경쟁률을 뚫고 연구비 지원 받으면서 이렇게 이제 박사 후 연구 과정 하셨고 그 다음에 또 프랑스 그외 여러 나라 이제 캐나다 등 연구소에서 연구를 하시고 2018년부터 현재 미국 어 유니버스티 플로리다에서 지금 이제 어 정년택 교수님으로 근무하고 계십니다. 어 오늘 발표하실 내용은 영어로는 Immersive Technology of Fried Site Research for Dental Education도 있는데 우리말로 하자면 은 직과 교육에 있어서 어, 실감 테크놀로지 그럴까요? 실감 기술에 대한 그 응용에 관한 연구를 발표해 주시겠습니다. 어, 마르쿠스 산토스 교수님 발표를 해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh... You can share. Yes, yeah. present this screen. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for the time. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna. So the this is the title, the JMOOC, yeah, the Immersive Technology Applied Research for Dental Education, and I'm gonna. I know that uh, Isang Kun Gyosunim already uh, briefly introduced, but uh, I'm gonna uh, show a couple of pictures. So this is, actually I graduated from Dong So Day, and this is my picture with uh, Chang Ji Kuk uh, Chong Jang Nim, and my pictures with Lee Byung Kuk Gyosunim. And then as uh, presented, I, and then I flew to uh, Germany for my first postdoc. I was working at Fraunhofer uh, Institute, And for my second postdoc, I went to University of Calgary in Canada. And finally, uh, starting from 2018, I worked in University of Florida as an assistant professor. And then uh, UF is currently uh, number five uh, top public research university. And we have the 16 college. We also in the R1 research university in, universe, uh, in, in United States. And this is our mascot, uh, the gator. And then uh, one of our product, probably you 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 once uh, try it. So Gatorade actually is coming from our university. So we always have uh, the entrepreneurial uh, spirit, how to make our research become the commercial product. And my research interest is uh, XR applied research for non-gaming entertainment. It doesn't mean that I don't like playing VR game. I love to play VR game, but for research purpose, I prefer to, uh, to pick the, something that not related with gaming and entertainment. All right, so I, uh, I will try to uh, give like a, a brief introduction about ARVR so that everybody in this uh, in this uh, virtual room have a uh, same perspective about uh, ARVR so we have in 3D display field we have uh, stereoscopic ARVR integral imaging and holographic so we are in the actually the big family of 3D display and then if you read a lot of uh, ARVR related paper i believe you know this diagram the virtual continuum It's introduced by Paul Milgram and uh, Fumio Kishino back in 1994. So it's spanned from left to right, real environment, AR, VR, and virtual environment. So an AR is closer to the real environment, meaning that we try to render the, uh, the digital content on the real space. 
Meanwhile, for VR, it's closer to the virtual environment, meaning that we try to put the real user inside the digital environment. And uh, we believe that AR VR will be the fourth transformation. The first transformation was the DOS computer. And then the second transformation was the GUI based uh, computer, just like what we have now. And the third uh, transformation was the handheld computer, both smartphone and uh, computer tablet. And this is going to be the next big thing in the, in the, in the, in the, in our, our life. So uh, the first, the first project that I want to share is the dental implant VR. So basically this project was started back in 2019. And we try to combine the VR and metaverse and dental implant simulation. Uh, actually, it was started when I met with one of the Indonesian professor, but he is the his dentist, uh, dental professor working at Chicago, and we decided to work together. And this is pretty much how it looks. So uh, at that time, because of COVID, we cannot, uh, we cannot open the lab, we cannot open the school. So he said that, how about if we create the VR simulation? Uh, and uh, for the first project, we we uh, we we, we decide to choose the dental implant, and we start with a single user. It means it's offline; it uh, doesn't require any internet connection, and we just try to replicate the 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 lab activity for the dental implant, and uh, we still use very traditional uh, VR controller. To, to, to mimic the, all of the interactions, something like grabbing the knife and then uh, and then like and then because this is the, the for education purpose, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sukocho asked me to can we hide and unhide the patient so that we can only focus on the jaw and then uh, we can remove all of the distraction and then we we can also adjust the transparency of the gum so that the the student can can understand let's say if if he or she drill the the part and then uh, the student can understand how deep is that is it gonna hit the nerve or not uh, because if it hit the nerve it's gonna be very dangerous for the student actually and of course, because this is a dental implant, it requires the spin. There is a, a spin activity as well. We put auditor, uh, the auditory um, stimulation as well so that the overall experience will be more uh, immersive. And this is the, how it looks. I'm just gonna show it briefly so we can grab. This is the patient. We use the Oculus Quest so we can have the room uh, experience instead of the tabletop experience. And there is the guideline, that, that green line, actually the guideline. And then the student can slice. If the student slides correctly, the gum will be open and the, the, the student can see the bone. And from there, can switch from, from, from knife to drill. And from here, uh, the student can uh, can pick the drill size, and from and then and then we can make a hole. Finally, we can put the implant. So there, we switch from drill to implant, and we put the implant like so yeah and then uh and then uh we did a research and then we got the we, we got a good uh feedback from the other professor the other uh, students but, and then uh one of the one of the faculty say uh can we make so that um uh we can we can put two or more uh, VR users inside the, the inside the virtual environment. So actually, uh, this is back in two thousand nineteen. So we create the multi user dental implant where uh, multiple VR users, Oculus Quest users, once they put a headset, they can join, they can meet and uh, and have the real time interaction with the with the student inside the 
inside the uh, inside the dentist room. And so this is actually we create our own metaphors. Um, in the of, of course the of course the scope is much simpler uh, compared to what Facebook did. But back in 2019, uh, this was quite uh, interesting uh, project because we got a lot of suddenly. Uh, positive response from the other faculty as well. So this is the illustration how two or more uh, VR users can go inside the room. And this is the point of view from user A. As you can see, uh, let's say user A is the instructor. We can actually have the real-time interaction like waving hand. And then of course there's a voice. So you can have the uh, voice uh, communication between user A and user B. And this is the view from the other side. From the student side so as you can see we, uh, uh, the student can see the instructor there and then this is where the fun part begin so instructor and student can have the real-time interaction this is the, the 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 point of metaphors right uh, the real user uh, multiple users can meet inside the virtual room and then interact at the same time and then from there the we can have the learning session without necessarily stuck in the uh, physical world. Like this. The overall experience same, we just put two users and they can have the real-time interaction. So that's the project. Of course, as, a, uh, as the part of our academic activities, we publish this work and uh, from this project, this is uh, two of the journals that we publish for this uh, project. And then the other project is the virtual standardized patient. Okay, so this is the combination between AR, VR, and we put a simple AI application. So in a, in a, in a medical school or in the dental school, it turns out that actually students need to get trained how to communicate with patient, right? Because when you go to the doctor, the doctor will try to understand your habit, your, uh, your health history. And then uh, if, if you have any complaint about your health, uh, the doctor need to understand mm -hmm. everything. So the communication skill is very important for the, for the doctor, for the medical school student, for the dental student. So that's why in the, in the traditional way, they're gonna call standardized patient. They call it standardized patient. Basically standardized patient is the actor, just an, a paid actor who gonna act like a patient. And then uh, this, this standardized patient will, uh, will get the script from the school. And then from there, the student will, will, uh, will practice, will train how to, how, to, how to communicate with the patient. So COVID happened, lab closed, the school closed, so they cannot invite the, the standardized patient. So we decided to create the virtual one. So we, we call it virtual standard as patient. And then uh, this is basically we offer in two formats. The first one is the AR where you can you can place the virtual patient on your room. You can just scan your room. We use uh, Google AR Core for the AR SDK. You can just scan your room and place the patient. And from there, you can start to talk you can, uh, based on the script that we give. And then we also have the VR, mobile VR session. Mm -hmm. And the AI part, actually, we use the natural language processing to facilitate the communication between the user and the patient. Uh, the point is we don't want the communication become very strict, but we want some uh, level of flexibilities. So that let's say uh, you say, hey, good morning. Hey, uh, how are you doing? The, the system can still can catch as a greeting and the virtual patient can uh, can give the correct answer. Um, so this is the video. I want to make sure the volume is not too loud. So we call it VSP, uh, virtual standard patient, very boring name, but so this is AI hand enhanced. And instead of marker base, we use the room uh, room skill experience. So that you just need to scan the room, and then you can place the patient there. And then we have the script. 
So this is the patient. And this is where the natural language processing works. Good morning, Mr. Andrews. Is it? I've been coming here for two years and I still don't have proper teeth. We will have time to discuss that. Let's start with updating your medical history. I will not take your blood pressure. Why? I'm fine. I don't want you to take my blood pressure. I'm sorry, but this is the clinic's protocol. Ugh, okay. Fine. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Andrews. Is it? I've been coming here for two years and I still don't have problems. Yeah, so a uh, couple important points from the VSP. Actually, the, the first one is the natural language processing. So as I said, uh, the NLP uh, really give us flexibilities to categorize the the the, the response versus the, the, the database of the question. Instead, so for example, like, uh, hi, good morning, Mr. Andrew, or good morning, Andrew, or how are you doing, Mr. Andrew? The if the the system still can catch as a as a first greeting and then can lead to the correct answer, correct correct answer. And then the other uh, cool feature that we prepare is actually the adaptive storytelling because we think that this is the virtual uh, learning. Uh, why not give the student a freedom to select a uh, couple scenarios? That's why in here, we actually give a couple options. For example, in this stage, you, the, the student actually can pick whether uh, the student want to try number one or number two. So the story of this project, the prototype is actually the student need to handle angry patient, let's say, uh, he or she already spent forty thousand US dollar to make the dental implant, but still, after one year, still not done properly. So he come very angry. So there is a chance for the student to try, let's say, number one, and answer number one can can really make the the student uh, the the patient become very angry, or the student can pick answer number two, where actually answer number two will will try to calm. The patient down so of course in the real world application we want to calm the patient but in in this exercise we let the student explore okay if i pick number one what's gonna happen okay uh, next time if i have a real patient i'm not gonna do that so i'm gonna just simply pick number two so uh ai and adaptive storytelling and of course the the other is uh we also prepare the the VR version, so not only AR version, so let's say the student have no space, the room is very packed with stuff, or uh, the in the, in, the, in the dormitory, he or she stay with another student, so um, the, the student can just pick the mobile version, for, uh, mobile version instead of the AR version. So, um, of course, we publish this paper and we include all the students together with my collaborator. And for this paper, we won the best paper award. And um, after the first two projects, the dental implant and the virtual standardized patient, we got a lot of uh, positive response, uh, imp positive impression from the other, uh, from the other uh, professor. So. Um, we decided to try another things, uh, but still related with uh, with uh, with dental uh, direction. So this time we decided to try the haptic because we got a lot of let's say complaint that when they try the dental implant, they cannot really try because in medical school they have to try when you when you do the procedure. Let's say you cut from the gum until you touch the bone, the student need to feel every single layer, right? And let's say you do the, you do the surgery, uh, uh, the, the student need to feel when, they, when the knife touch the skin, hit the muscle until hit the bone, the student need sure. to be able to, to really feel every single layer. And, and that's something that still uh, lack from, from our uh, Oculus controller. Uh, it can just give you the vibration in, uh, in some level, 
but it cannot give you the resistance. It lack of resistance. That's why we want to try the haptic. So we want to combine between the VR and the haptic. And for this project, we we pick the uh, the, the cavity preps because uh, based on the data, uh, the the cavity issue is one of the biggest problem when the kids or, or adult come to the dental clinic because they have cavities. Maybe because the habits, especially in the United States, uh, we love to eat something sugary, right? Uh, the, the soda, the candies, everything's very sweet in here. So the cavities become one of the uh, issues in here. So uh, we purchased this glove. It looks very futuristic. Basically, this glove has like a sensor that gives you the vibration in six points. The first point is your in the middle of your palm. And then uh, the other five is your on your finger finger point, and then um, originally it should be uh, this glove work in the three degree of freedom. So it means um, it has no ability to move around, just give you the vibration. I know it's very limited, but we decided to try. But as you can see here, there is a space that actually you can plug the Oculus Quest controller so that it looks like so. And once you plug the Oculus Quest controller, the glove suddenly become the six degree of freedom uh, glove. So it, so it means you can move around and do the procedure. And then the, 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 the student or the user can really see your hand from inside the, the headset. So this is the illustration. Right, so we have the teeth, we have the uh, glove, and you can do something. And this is exactly what happened, actually. So we have the Oculus Quest 2, we put the controller, and we start to, to, uh, to drill the, the teeth. So this is the video. Medical training can be expensive and inaccessible. For this project, we explore the field of VR medical dentist training for those who are learning to be professional dentists. Usually, this is a training that happens in person and requires a lot of resources such as time, money, actors, and the need to be physically present. This may not be possible due to financial reasons, disabilities, or even pandemics. One solution could be a class over Zoom or a YouTube tutorial. However, when learning technical tools, the lack of immersion with these tools is an issue as it does not allow for realistic practice. We created Dentist VR, a virtual reality application which consists of a virtual dentist office where the users, student dentists in this case, are tasked with filling out cavities on virtual teeth. The main issue with virtual training in this scenario is that there is no haptic reception. The inability to feel touch in virtual immersive environments is detrimental to the training because of the lack of realism. In order to create an experience as close to real life as possible, the haptic feedback from the drill is essential to teach the users the technicalities of drilling into a tooth, as well as create immersion. In the application, we use Bebop haptic gloves, which produce a vibrating reaction. The feedback received varies with the depth and direction of the drilling. This increases the accuracy of the usability and teaches the user about the technical skills of filling cavities. This also promotes accessibility to VR patient training overall. In order to increase the accessibility and accuracy of VR medical training, in the future we see this as an educational tool that can be used by dentists and you. Yeah, so that's, the, that's overall the experience. So you put on the glove, you can do the drill, and then uh, as part of the learning process, they need to see the output, the, the result of their work. So that's why uh, we, we put the feature where they can pop up the teeth and then they can scale up and scale down using the hand gesture. And then we, we also add the uh, uh, transparency adjustment uh, feature so that the student can see uh, the, the angle and how far their drill output from the nerve and everything. So. Uh, that's part of the learning process that requested by uh, our research collaborator, the, the dental part. And uh, even though it works really well, we are not really happy with the, with the output because we still lack one of the most essential part from this project, the resistance. 
So even though we can feel the vibration, we still cannot feel the resistance from 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 the pro from the from the project. That's why we decided to acquire this haptic pen, and then we want to combine it with the headset, and then uh, so that I already tried by myself, so we can actually really feel the squishiness, the 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 texture of the teeth. We can, we, and then, uh, and then we have the hypothesis that if we can combine the touch sense uh, given by this haptic combined with the auditory uh, stimulation and with the visual stimulation, I think we can give much better learning experience compared to the glove one. But that's uh, still ongoing process. I think we can uh, we can finish this project, I think, in, in this December or on January. And this is the current progress. We have this teeth, and then from there we can make a hole using, uh, and then I know that you can. Uh, we cannot really feel it in the video, but actually, if you if you really use the pen, once you make the drill, you have to really push it in 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 certain way, so that and then you need to wait for a couple of seconds until you can you can get the depth that it, uh, that you want. And, and that's going to be the last slide from my presentation. If you have any question, feel free to reach me at marcus.santoso at ufl.edu. Thank you so much and come samila. Uh, we cannot hear you, uh, Isang Gunkirsenim. Uh, thank you for your presentations, Dr. Santos, Marco Santos. <laughs> and 청취자 혹시 들으신 분, 참여하신 분 혹시 질문 있으면은 이 말로 해주시면은 제가 번역해 드리겠습니다. Uh, actually, I was uh, asking the have the questions about the haptic things, uh, but uh, yeah, sure, in, sure. in your third project, you yeah. did that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought about the uh, uh, you are the patient, but the patient it can communicate with the, the student, right? Mm -hmm. And while the treatment, the the patient and the doctor mm -hmm. can communicate. Oh, for for the for, for example, for, for uh -huh. treatment, the patient can in their yeah. case can his jaw can be narrowed or uh, uh -huh. wider. Your you, your jaw, right? Right, right, right. That, that's a good idea because mm. uh, with the with the current with the current project, we just only want to focus on the haptic part the the cavity spread part but we do not add that feature mm. that's something that I, I will i will bring to my research collaborator so mm. we can we can actually combine the the natural language processing with the haptic with the vr1 so that we can meanwhile the procedure mm. uh undergoing so we can still communicate with the with the with the yeah. patient just you know are you okay there you feel yeah uh, yeah make the patient yeah, easier right yeah uh, Kentana, Kentana. okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good idea thank you so much i'm going to i'm going to bring it to my i'm going to bring it to my my sure. business collaborator yeah, yeah. so as the doctor to make the patient to make the mind easy yeah yeah correct correct right? correct correct yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. by communicating it can it can yeah, it can calm them the, down the, yeah. uh, some important uh, things to have <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you so much that's that's a really really good idea really good idea yes uh -huh. thank you for your thank you all right yeah. thank you so much <laughs>